Hi, I'm Nico. This is Nico's Corner. In this channel, I'm covering Hima, which is historical European martial arts. Martial arts, traditions and techniques which originated on the European continent from beginning of time till you know, beginning of the 20th century. For me personally, I draw the line on the First World War. I, I am just in that area, so I'm covering that part as well. I have an interest in Kramaga and Sistema, so occasionally I do content on those systems, uh, but my main focus is in Hima. In this video, I'm covering the life and work of Paulus Hector Main, which is a controversial figure in the Hima community. If you are new to him or to Hima, stay and you're going to find out why. Uh, I believe it's an actually interesting uh, topic to discover, so I'm looking forward for your comments in the section. Uh, please like and subscribe. The attention drives my work. Uh, this is the first time I'm doing a video in this setting, so any feedback you can give me is going to be very much useful. And thank you very much for watching. So stay tuned to find out why Paulo Hector Mary is controversial in the HEMA community. And uh, enjoy the video. Paulo Hector Mary was a native from Augsburg, nowadays Germany. At the time, the city of Augsburg was part of the Holy Roman Empire, and as such it had great autonomy and freedom. It was known for its banking industry, and it was a very rich city. Mayer received from a younger age training in the arts of fencing and wrestling. A contemporary of Jaki Mayer, another famous fencing master, some would say more famous, Jaki, uh, Paulus Hector Mayer felt that during his time the Asian arts of fencing and historical fighting were getting lost. As such, he felt it was a great shame and he wanted to do whatever he could to restore the Asian tradition. He owned a very large collection of historical manuscripts, which he acquired at a great cost. So, in order to preserve the tradition, he started writing his own manuscripts. The manuscript was called the Opus Amplissimus de Arte Atletica, which roughly translates into the complete book of athletic arts. A total of three copies of the manuscript were produced, each being bigger, larger and more ambitious than the other. To produce his manuscript, he hired a famous local painter, Jörg Brudjanger, to create the illustrations for his book. He also hired two local athletes, or maybe fancy masters or students, uh, to pose in his various pictures. The Victor Hour article says there were a total two athletes, however, if you take a look at the pictures, you clearly see there were many more, some of which were clearly of African descent. So, as a side note, uh, the Hollywood trope of putting black actors in medieval full movies set in Europe may not be a total fallacy, or artistic license, or a note of political correctness. Europe was interacting very heavily with its uh, African neighbors, especially in Sp Spain, where the um, Spanish people were fighting the invasion from Muslims from Africa, so it's not inconceivable to have people from Africa participating occasionally in European events. The production of his manuscript took four long years, which, with his lavish lifestyle and the cost of paying the painter and athletes, Mayer was financially ruined. Was he ruined, really? Yes, yes. In order to cover his increasing costs, he was forced to sell off his family fortune. Unfortunately, he did not learn his lesson, so he continued in with his lavish lifestyle, indulging himself in acquiring expensive historical manuscripts and throwing parties for the Augsburg elite. Luckily, or unluckily, as we are going to find out soon, in 1541 he took the position of the city treasurer. With a limited access to city funds, he embezzled large sums to pay for his expenses. He managed to get away with it for some time, adapting thanks to his position in the city's bureaucracy. But eventually, the hand of justice caught with him. In 1759, he was reported to the city council about his illicit affairs related to the city funds. The city council launched an investigation into his books, which yielded the obvious results. At the age of 62, Paulo Sector Mayer was hang hanged by the city of Augsburg for his love of historical fencing and fine living. The people of Augsburg, also ever pragmatic, proceeded to sell his estate to cover at least partially the funds lost to his big appetites. 
Among his possessions, it was reported a large collection of armor, weapons of various types, including pistols and rifles in good condition, lovingly scattered through his house. Two of his books reside in the university libraries of Dresden and München, and one resides in the Austrian National Library of Vienna. The book itself is an amazing work of art, with beautiful color illustrations and exceeded details descriptions of martial techniques and drills. It is broken into two main sections, containing everything under the sun. It covers the following weapons. The longsword, the dasak, the rapier, the peasant stick, the sickle, the scythe, the short staff, the long staff, the dagger, wrestling, which is not a weapon, but you know, understand. Different combinations of weapons, combat in armor with various weapons on foot versus horse and horsemen versus horsemen. It contains everything under the sun. It is the biggest Hima book ever. Biggest. Mers Opus Amplissimus de Arte Atletica is a distinctive form of other Hima manuscripts in several ways. First and foremost, it is obviously and clearly, clearly a derivative work. If you take Fiore de Libri, for example, which is an original work, the book written by Paulus Hector Mayer is always based on other manuscripts, except where it's not. The second striking difference from its predecessors is the quality of the material. No other HEMA manual has the quality and the quantity of illustrations that the book from Paulus Hector Mayer has. It is no surprise that he had to steal money to create it. Last but not least, an avid student of Mayer's work will notice that the techniques depicted in the manuscript differ from the original techniques. While in the original source you would have image, two lines of text, he attacks, you defend, you do this and then you destroy him, Paulus Hector Mayer has a very elaborate section com composing of several techniques, usually four to five, proceeding in a common fashion. Tick, tack, tick, tack. I attack, I defend, you counter-defend, I counter-counter-defend, and so on till the end. It is interesting to study his didactic approach. Each plays a long sequence of tick per tad actions between two partners. It is more a choreographed in sequence of steps than a mere here is how you defend from this attack instructions, which is something which is typical for a normal HEMA manuscript. The basic structure of a mere play works like this. The image of a play often denotes the starting position or the end of the first action of the play. This is extremely helpful in figuring out who goes first in a play since there is no demarcation like in Fiore where the garter and the crown in Fiore indicate the basic defenses and the victor in a play. The text proceeds with the following format which does not change through the manuscript. The first fencer starts with an attack and succeeds. No. The first fencer starts with an attack, which is countered, countered with a counterattack by the second fencer, and so forth, until we reach to the end of the manuscript. As a student, you have several modes in how you can train this section. First, it is extremely specific, so you don't have to do a lot of guessing what the author meant. With any hammer big background, you should be able to handle it just fine. You can train the play as is, written from beginning to end, and then change roles. Or you can train with stops. The first partner attacks and succeeds. Then the first partner attacks, is countered by the second partner who succeeds. Then the first partner attacks. It will not be fair when covering Mayer's life and work not to mention the criticism in the modern HEMA community. Where should we, where should we get started? First, Mer contains weapons which are not mentioned in any other HEMA manuscript. For example, the sickle and the scythe. So, how applicable these techniques are and how useful and founded in actually HEMA martial traditions where we, at least for the other masters for sure know, these guys did what they wrote. In Mer, we don't know because we don't have any other manuscripts um, covering these techniques. And uh, we basically know that he, the other sections of the manuscript are always based on some other derivative work. So I have my own opinion about it. 
but I would like to hear your comments, so please let me know what you, uh, what you think about that in the comment section. Um, another element of the um, uh, Mayer's manuscript is the teaching methodology. Every Hema manuscript that I have encountered, at least in the early Middle Ages and the Renaissance period, is a very simple, I do an attack, you defend, you do something. It's very short, it's more a note. Mayer has actually a didactic approach. It's, it's the first manuscript that I have encountered that has a didactical approach, where you can have a sequence, you can just train, memorize and run it. And this is the only Hema manuscript where actually you can see it. So for me, that indicates that um, he, he, he was writing how people were basically being taught, at least in the city of Osburg. So which is an interesting uh, glimpse into the early Hema tradition, how people were actually taught. And this is something that we as Hema um, practitioners and interpretators, we, we don't have. We don't have that many materials on how people were taught. So this is, for me, a very interesting insight. But I'm actually looking forward to hear your opinion and your feedback on this. Um, so please uh, like and subscribe, share this video, uh, let me know what you think in the comment section and uh, tell me what you would like to see next. Thank you very much. Nico here. Bye.